Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Lena Hardy. It's so nice to be able to go outside and do things again after the long, cold winter. One of the premier annual events of the spring is coming up, the Cultural Arts Council's Taste of Douglasville. Here is Interim Director Emily Leitner to give us all the details. So Taste of Douglasville is going to be May 19th. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in downtown Douglasville. We're excited. We have a lot of great things coming up. So as a nonprofit, uh, this is a huge fundraiser for us. It's one of our biggest events. Um, without this fundraiser, we want to be able to put on the events that we do to the community, like our uh, Family Arts Ventures programs that we bring to the school system for completely free of cost. And also to the community, we do a follow-up free public program. We also do um, our monthly exhibits. We have um, classes at low rates, but all of this wouldn't be possible without the fundraising efforts that we put on. So we invite all the community to come out. So at the Taste, we'll have a lot of different sections. We'll have the restaurant committees, um, which will be different food vendors. We open it up to caterers and to um, different food trucks this year. We got our arts and crafts, which is all handmade items. We have our better living department, which will be um, different businesses throughout our community. And of course, we have our wonderful sponsors that help put up this event on as well. We're a nonprofit organization, so this is a fundraiser for us. Uh, so we have a lot of great sponsors like Greystone Power. They're always there to support us um, and this community. We have our Douglas County Economic Development Authority. We have West Georgia Technical College. Uh, we have Pepsi. We have Deny Signs. We have award system. We have a lot of support in this community um, that help us. We have arts and crafts vendors that are also local um, and some of our satellites like, like the Sweetwater Camera Club um, that will be having a booth this set up this year for um, exhibiting their different photography works. So some of the restaurants include Fabiano's. Uh, uh, they'll be serving their amazing, wonderful pizza. And we'll have Gabe's downtown. Uh, they have the, the most amazing Cajun egg roll that makes my mouth water just talking about it right now. And we have um, different vendors like Proof of the Pudding um, from our catering department um, that will be there. And seeing all these menus come through just, just makes me hungry. <laughs> So uh, Taste of Douglasville, May 19th, be there. Great event for your family, bring them out. It's a fun day. Our Kids Corner is completely free. Um, we'll have a lot of great things with WSA having their water booth. We'll have the children's dental group. Um, they get a little bit of education, but they also get some free things. We'll have Thunder Zone with their bowling again. Um, so it's a lot of fun for the whole family. Come out, try some food, get to know your community. Uh, it's May 19th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in downtown Douglasville. The 2016 SPLAS referendum was passed by the citizens of Douglas County, and the tax dollars have been coming in for over a year. The Douglas County Fire Department has been fortunate to be included in the program and has purchased a brand new high-tech fire safety house. Here is what it can do and where you might see it. This piece of equipment behind us is, uh, it helps us to prepare for the things that we can't prepare for normally, uh, unless you're put into those kinds of situations. We have the ability to simulate the fire conditions, uh, fire conditions in the stove, uh, stove tops that actually spread into the cabinets. It has the ability to simulate uh, microwave fires, toaster oven fires, tornado conditions, flood conditions, and earthquakes. It was donated to us by Allstate Insurance, and we had it for like 20 years. But it had done its time. It was a very good tool at one time when we first got it. It was pretty good to educate with, but this new one is a whole lot more as far as teaching kids real safety and giving them more hands-on and more what really happens in a fire. So the other one didn't do any of that. It was all we had to talk through the whole thing on the old one. It would smoke up. It was about the only thing it really had going for it. But it served its time and done a very good job with what years we did use it. It's going to benefit mostly some of the younger generation, the kids that never has had a chance to, to be educated in the fire side of it. What happens if they're home alone? Something does happen. It, and how to prevent some of the stuff that does happen when they are there by themselves, or even if their parents are there. Actually, it could be used for some adults, because some of the scenarios, you're probably going to have to motor kids to take them through without scaring them, So, because it does get real in there. It'll be at most of your daycares, a lot of your schools will call and set up times with us to take it out and demonstrate, take the kids through it, and educate them on where the meeting place is and what to talk to their parents about and how to get down and 
check the door if it's hot, sleep with your bedroom doors closed, the door does get hot in, inside the safety house, and how to unplug or not open the stove if it's on fire so it don't spread to the cabinets, it actually does that. Everything on this fire safety house can be controlled via iPad and watched on a television screen on the outside to ensure the safety of the children on the inside. The firehouse was purchased through splosh funds. Uh, the one additional penny per sales tax really made a difference in purchasing this fire safety house behind us. We really want to thank the citizens for all that they've done uh, and their participation in the splosh fund. And all around, it's just, a, it's just an awesome piece of equipment. Speaking of the 2016 SPLOST, in an attempt to remain completely transparent, the Board of Commissioners has routinely updated the citizens on the progress of the program, how much money is coming in and where the money is being spent. Program Manager Rich Bolain has presented this information to the Board of Commissioners each month at their work session and their regular meeting, and each presentation is broadcasted live and recorded. Recently, the commissioners requested that DCTV 23 put together a new interview show to further inform the citizens on the progress of the SPLOST and what they can expect over the next few months at a time. Here is the first episode of that new show. Welcome to DC 23. I'm Commissioner Mitchell. It's the Splost Up to the Minute Updates. Okay, and these are my special guests. <laughs> but let's, let's get into the whole thing about this update. Now, in the Splost program, there's 32%, correct me if I'm wrong, and these guys will verify these numbers for me. Yes. There's 32% of the Splost that goes toward EMS, Fire EMS. Fire EMS. There's 51% that goes to transportation. Correct. And then the other 17% goes to Parks and Rec. Right. So that's what the voters voted on. That's kind of where your, your splash dollars are being spent. And what my job is today is to just kind of talk with these guys. And who I've got is Mr. David Good and i got Rick here. So you guys will introduce yourselves and talk about what it is that you do and what's your role in the whole splash makeup. Okay. Start with you, Mr. Good. All right. Well, my name is, uh, of course, David Good. I'm the Splash Communications Director. And what I do is I go out there in the community and let people know what it is that's going on. So once we make a presentation to the commissioners, the board of commissioners, I go out there and let them know this is what's been voted on. These are the things that are coming, you know, if it's coming into their neighborhood or if it's something that's going to be countywide, such as the new radio system. So we're speaking of two, though, District 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're talking right. about countywide. Correct. And all community is kind of your relationship with the community, correct? Correct. correct. Okay. So, Rick, you want to share with everybody sure. so the viewing sure. audience to know who you are? I'm Rich Bolain. I'm with Moreland Alley. To Belly Associates and I'm the program manager for the Splosh program and basically we manage the revenues coming in and then the itemized list of projects making sure that we prioritize them and build them in that order. And speaking so, of the priority, the list is prioritized based on the Board of Commissioners so that you guys understand that there's a priority list correct. that these guys kind of follow to assure that your splash dollars are spent correctly correct. and based correct. on the order in which given by the Board of Direct, I mean, the Board of Commissioners. And what the voters voted and on. And what the voters voted correct. on. So, so let's let's start with what's out there We okay. a year in. So finance-wise, dollars and cents-wise, where are we looking thus far? Finance-wise, we were looking to collect about $2 million a month, okay. $24 million for the total for uh -huh. the first year. Uh, through 10 months, we're about 400000 below where we thought we would be, which is about 40000 a month. It's roughly okay. 2%. Okay. So okay. it's not, not bad, uh, certainly nothing to worry about right now. But it's just something to keep in the back of our mind as we move forward. But the ultimate goal is about a hundred mil plus million dollars that we're going to come out in a six-year splash. And what this is all about, correct? Correct. Uh, oh. The Douglas County portion is a hundred million dollars for the six years. Wow. Yes. That's a good number. Good Great number. number. So yes. let's talk about some projects, though. So everybody yep. understand the finances. We have got all the yep. numbers. Let's talk about a couple of projects okay. that we can talk about that that's come to fruition okay. that we're actually dealing with. So I don't know, Dave, you want to share with a couple of projects that, that's out there? I mean, we're, but, we're looking yeah, at one yeah, right yeah. now. I mean, just right <laughs> yes. here now, if you want to, you know, call it out right sure. now. So based on the fire at EMS, yeah. this is kind of one of the projects that came out of the equipment side of this. So Correct. let's talk about this particular project just as of right now. Okay, well, really, um, when you talk to the voters, a lot of times they want to have things that are going to be both helpful and educational. Okay. So that's exactly what this firehouse does, is that it's both mm -hmm. needed and it's educational. So right. therefore, if a person needs to figure out, hey, how do I get out of my house? 
this is a perfect thing, especially for when a kid is actually home alone. Not yeah. saying little children, but right. teenagers, yeah. when they're home alone, this will teach them exactly how do they end up getting out of a fire situation. Got it. So this is just one of the projects, of many, mm -hmm. that we've actually purchased that cost us roughly? This was, I think, $118,000. Got it. Got it. And, okay. Uh, any other future equipments that's let's take the projects now and the categories that we've got some projects that are out there so let's start with ems sure What's, fire ems okay. the 32 percent the biggest project we okay. have is the digital radio system it's okay. basically upgrading the 911 system to 21st century technology so uh, that contract was awarded about two months ago to motorola okay and we're just getting started with that you'll see that come uh, start to move into construction later this year a couple other equipment purchases we did for the fire department. Bought a brand new ladder truck, $1.3 million ladder truck, a pumper truck, yes, and, yes. Uh, and a new ambulance to replace some of the older ambulances behind us right now. All so. of this out of equipment, yeah. out of the 32%. Out of the 32%. Category. And, uh, yep. Got it. Yes. And Anything uh, else? I mean. Uh, and then also, of course, we ended up having um, Fire Station 2 and Fire Station 4 re roofed. So those are definitely That's correct. And, and we use yeah. local contractors, I believe, for both of those. What about some transportation projects that are out there that we can Transportation, kinda... okay. we just finished up last fall. We finished up that first year of uh, the paving program. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we paved 14 and a half miles of road, Got roughly you. $3 million. Uh, we have a number of intersections in the design phase. There's nine intersections in the total splash program. We're in design in four of them right now. Got You'll start to see some of the construction happen later this year okay. on some of them. We're also buying equipment for Douglas County, the, the DOT. We okay. purchased okay. a paver, asphalt okay. paver, Correct. a roller, and uh, some other miscellaneous okay, equipment. Okay, let's, let's move into Parks and Rec because this is going to be a quick minute. Now, we don't yeah. want to count because <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going to be doing updates on, yep. on a quarterly Correct. or monthly yep. basis. But let's talk about some quick Parks and Rec items that are out there and that's moving in, sure. in that direction. Parks and Rec right now down at Boundary Waters. Okay. Uh, we're looking at a new uh, uh, restroom concession and press box okay. and some soccer field lights. Okay. Uh, the, the concession area is in design right now, so we'll uh, finishing up that and then uh, the soccer field lights you'll see that happen later this summer uh, we've got a new rec center also going at boundary mm -hmm. waters yeah. that we just awarded to an a and e firm architect okay. engineering okay. firm okay. Okay. so okay. they'll get started on the design of that uh deer lick park uh new tennis courts okay. new lighting for okay. those tennis courts we're working on that Right. So we're busy in the parks and recs, and Absolutely. then we got the Senior Citizen Center that's Wait, down the road. And the that's, that's coming down the road. So That's still in the evaluation phase, yes, so yes, that'll yes. be coming we're, soon. We're working it out. So yep. are, there, are there any closing remarks that we want to share before we kind of get out of here and get ready for the next update? Well, one of them actually okay. is the fact that we'll be doing surveys both for the uh, Senior Center and also for the uh, New Community Center. So people will actually know to find out what's exactly going to go into these places. Got it. You know, it's your facility. Yes. Therefore, tell us what you want in it. Right. right. In that brick and mortar. Correct. What would you like to see within that brick and mortar? Correct. Oh, yeah. Good and, stuff. And Good so up. those are things that we're putting out there. So that's what your job is to get yes. to out there in the community, having that kind of conversation, quick conversation with these guys as to right. what they want in it. Just not only just the brick and mortar, which is kind of like brick and mortar cost. That's what it is. Now, what we want to see inside that senior citizen center, what we want to see in that community center and so on. Correct. 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 OK. Anything else? Final comment. If you're a, okay. a business here in Douglas County and you think you can help on the splash program, go to our website, look us up. And uh, we're always looking for local business. To help and we'll us put out. your website right here. You'll see the website so we can kind of get these people and get awesome. engaged. Awesome. And we need to kind of get the community engaged, not That's only from the mere fact of what they want within this brick and mortar, but to also spend in this whole splash dollar because the, we want to make sure that we get these guys engaged from a contractor perspective, correct? Correct. correct. David, how can they reach you? Um, they can reach me basically through the same way, just going to the um, to the website and you'll see the emails drop down and uh, reach me that way. And if you still want to reach me right now, dmgood2095 at gmail.com. Got it. And remember, buy locally, spend locally, be local. You got you go. it. Hey, that's the Splashed Up to the Minute update. Stick around. There's more to come. There's more projects. And we're going to be spending uh, roughly about five years, six years of this whole project. So yep. there's a lot to come. Stay tuned, DC 23, I'm Commissioner Mitchell. The 50th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act is this month. Local realtor Amy McCoy is helping to sponsor a commemorative event held in downtown Douglasville. Here is Mrs. McCoy to tell us all about the event and some information about how the Fair Housing Act came into existence. Hi, 
I'm Amy McCoy, the president-elect of the West Georgia Board of Realtors, and we are going to be commemorating the 50th anniversary of the 1968 Fair Housing Act. On April 11th, uh, 1968 was the legislation passed of, of the Fair Housing Act, and we are going to commemorate it here in O'Neill Plaza. Uh, we are going to be having a a variety of acts between 12 to 15 schools that's going to be putting on a major performance in the commemoration of it. Uh, we have spoken word, we're going to have a drum line, we've got choruses. Um, it's not just about the youth, it's about the community coming together and showcasing the diversity in Douglas County. So we're really excited uh, to show how far Douglas County has come from. Well, fair housing is very important. It not, it's not just about housing. Um, well, it has a lot to do with housing between being able to purchase, being able to lease, also being able to finance. Without fair housing, we wouldn't have communities being able to thrive, period. Um, it not just affects just the housing, but the overall economics of a community, the health of a community, the schools in the community. I love the fact that this year, one of our legislators had proposed um, adding sexual identity and, uh, and uh, transgender you know, to the protected class. And we have so far to come, and uh, we're looking forward to it happening. So it, the legislation was actually proposed in 1966, and it's unfortunate that we had to have the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, April 4th of 1968, that then uh, our president decided to sign the Legislation Act on April 11th of 1968. And here we are 50 years later commemorating the legislation pass of 1968 Fair Housing Act. We're going to be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Fair Housing uh, here in O'Neill Plaza, downtown Douglasville. We hope that you can come and enjoy. Congressman Davis Scott will hold his annual art competition at the Douglas County Courthouse this month. The art is from all over his district. Pieces will be judged and winners will be given scholarships and prizes at the competition ceremony in Citizens Hall here at the courthouse. Now here is a clip from last year's ceremony and the very talented winners. But third place, <laughs> this duty comes from his master's choice, Miss Emma Bell. Miss Emma Bell. <laughs> okay, in second place, from Langston Hughes High School, Mr. Aronson Hurd Jr. Langston Hughes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hold up real high. Okay, so I'm gonna read off the prizes for the first place winner one more time. For the first place winner, they will win a $12,000 scholarship to the Art Institute of Atlanta, $3,000 scholarship to the Savannah College of Art and Design, renewable up for four years, so that's valued at $12,000. A $1,000 scholarship to the art school of their choice, two round trip airfare tickets on Southwest Airlines to attend the National Ribbon Cutting in Washington, D.C and your artwork will hang in the tunnel of the Cannon House building for one year. And that winner is from Langston Hughes High School, Christian Alexander. Whoa, man! Oh, boy! My Lord, my Lord, my Lord! Isn't that wonderful? So Man. the judges for the art competition stated that Christian's artwork was amazing use of color and texture, good lighting with the boys, Ooh. showing social hierarchy and nice expression of emotion. Wow, man, look at that. Now, um, I want to make sure we act. Let's count up this money. So, so, 12, 12. $12,000. $12,000. This is a $12,000 check, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that wonderful? All right, that's 12. Plus 3000 from Savannah College of Art and Design, so that's renewable for four years, so that's another 12000 Another 12000 <laughs> So. Then $1,000. $24,000. Plus another 1000 Another 1000 And that's it. <laughs> that's. That's, that's $25,000. $25,000. God bless you all for that. Let the word go out. That's our show for this month. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out all of our programming on DCTV 23. You can find us on Comcast Channel 23, 
AT&T UVerse Channel 99 and online at DCTV23.com. We end our show with a monthly birthday celebration for seniors at the Woody Fight Senior Center. See you next time. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Okay. This is a, a room full, two rooms full here today, and we're so glad of that, that you're here for our March birthday party. We also have with us our chairperson, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones. Good morning, March babies. Good morning. I'm one too, so can you say, I love it. <laughs> Happy birthday to each and every one in here. And guess what the wind blew in today? Blew us in. <laughs> because I think March is a phenomenal month. You all have just, you packed the house. I'm not sure if you sneaked and read my birth, birth certificate or not, but you're here. Yeah. So thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate everything you all do. We love our, our seniors. I am one too. I will be 60, and I'm not ashamed. Oh, shit. I'll be yeah. 60. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 60 March 10th. So I'm kicking it off. So now I want everybody else to say, and I have one daughter. She's 33. So if I unleash the dragon and told you about me, hopefully you'll tell us about you. And I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. All right. So I'm a senior too. So happy birthday, everybody. Thanks. Loretta McCain. I was born in Chicago, Illinois. I am 72 years old as of yesterday. Happy birthday. Oh, Happy birthday. This is one of my buddies, too. So. Okay, and your name? Vioris Brown. And um, I was born in Jamaica with Cindy's. Yes. And I'm, I will be 75 at March 19th. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Very, very good. Okay. Cheryl Morris. Um, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and my birthday is March 4th, and I will be 60. Okay. All right. Happy birthday. Let's, let's do it. Bring it in. <laughs> I know. Okay. My name is Cassandra Taylor, and I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, March 10th. I'm a Grady baby. All right. March All right. 10th. All right. Have the same birthday. How about that? Okay. My name is Marion Langley, and I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. My birthday is March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day, and I will be 83. Oh, right. Oh, right. Amazing. Yes. Uh, my name is Dev Ormiston. I was born in Urbana, Illinois, on March 11th, and I'll be 71. All right. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's Joan Dermatis. Hey, Joan. I was born on March 6th and in Irvington, New Jersey, and I will be 86 in four days. Wow. wow. <laughs> All right, happy birthday. Right. Very, very, very good. good. Stay good. <laughs> uh, <of course. laughs> okay. Well, She's... my name is Barbara Ann Paul. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. My birth date is March 10th, 1958. I'll be 60 years old. All right. All right. All right. Okay. March 10th. Yeah, I know. My birthday. This is fun. <laughs> my name is Carolyn Spencer. I was born in Gastonia, North Carolina, and I'll be 71 on March the 11th. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. March the 11th. Okay. Here we go. I'm Herbert Blanchard. I'm from down the bayou in Louisiana, born in a little oh, town called Huma, which is 60 miles below New Orleans. And I'll be 69 on March 12th. All right. Very, Very good. good. I'm Helen Greening. I was born in Hackensack, New Jersey, on March the 6th, which was also my dad's birthday. And I'll be 78. Oh, Very wow. good. Happy birthday. My name is Sharon people. Fisher. I was born in Buffalo, New York on March 2nd, 1950, and I am 68 today. Oh, today's your birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank I love you. these March birthday parties. We know how to party. Yeah. And who is this over here? Oh, right. <laughs> My name is Julia Ben. I was born in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and my birthday is March the 25th, and I'll be 70. Happy birthday. Okay. Good, honey. Woo. Okay. Thank you. My name is Eddie Lige. I was born in Mobile, Alabama in 1954. I turned 64 
yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Okay. Camera around here again. Oh, come on now. I forgot who I was. She <laughs> said. I'm Dorothea Leathers. Hi, I was Dorothea. born in Atlanta, Georgia, 1948, March 26th. Happy and birthday. I will be 70 years old oh, later on yeah. this month. Yeah, oh, right. Happy See, birthday. I can do that to her because I have to keep her straight all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, I'm Emily Vaughn. Uh, I was born in Tuscumbia, Alabama, and I will be 78 years old this month. Yeah. Happy Very birthday. Good. Okay. My name is Bobby Vaughn. I'm the other part of this one here, <laughs> and I've been we've been married over half my life. Oh, wow. My birthday is March the 28th and 34, and the 28th this month, I'll be four, uh, 84. Oh, 84. Right. Happy oh, birthday! Good. My good. mother's birthday is the 28th. Yeah. Happy birthday! Yeah. Your birthday too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you get back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Through. Here we go. I'm Janet Stinchcomb. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and I will be 68 <laughs> on March the 14th. Okay. Right. At least we know it's March the 14th. <laughs> right. okay. Very good. Zola Ray. My name is Zola Ray, and my birthday is March 13th, 1929. I'll be 89. All, All right. right. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm Helen Wilbanks. I was born in a little small town in South Georgia named Homerville, and my husband always liked to tell people he found me in the swamp, <laughs> but I'll be 80 years old on March the 19th. Oh. My name is Don Long. I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana on March 5th, 1947. I'll be 71 Monday. All right. Okay. Happy birthday. You say? My name is Marcella Smith. I was born in Ella J, Georgia, and on March 22nd, I'll be 73. Okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. I like the stripes. This is cute. I am Katherine Thornton, and on March 11th, I'll be 77. All right. March 11th. And where were you born? <laughs> oh, I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. Ooh, All yeah. right. I can hear Good it. crab country. Yes. Right. Happy birthday. Yes. I'm Mononia Glass. I was born in Brandon, Mississippi, and on the 22nd, I'll be 68. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Mississippi. My mother was born in Mississippi. <laughs> now, I wonder who this is. A lot of us in here know this man oh, right here. Oh, yeah. Let me get over there. I'm seat. Jack Baggett. I was born March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, in Douglas County, Georgia. All right. All right. Oh, happy how birthday. do you? I'll be 84. Okay. All right. Happy birthday, Mr. Baggett. Thank you. <laughs> Jack always helps us out with our senior picnic, so I was glad to see him yeah. coming today. Yeah, I'll be down okay. here. I know. More birthday. All right. My name is Larry Allen. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, March 4th, 1942. I'll be 76 on March 4th. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to 